Hi there, I'm Renaud from More Mountains, and today we're going to be talking about springs and more specifically spring components. So from the very start, Phil has had springs in various parts, right? You will find them in helpers like the MM Follow Target, in some feedbacks, you'll find them in Squash and Stretch. And of course, there's the Spring API that you can use in your code directly. But with the release of version 4.1 back in May, Phil now comes with Spring components, a variety of them, there's more than 70, to control everything from the position of an object, its rotation, its scale, the obvious stuff, but also the intensity of a light, a value on a shader, the field of view on a camera, and many more. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And before we dive into these very cool spring components, I just wanted to mention that everything I'm talking about in these videos is, of course, available in the field documentation. Uh, specifically, there's a section about springs that will go about the core concepts, but also uh, spring components, the thing we're going to be talking about today, spring methods, you'll find recipes to add things in a few clicks. And it's also going to explain to you how to use code, what the various components are, um, but also clamping, the Springs API, everything is in there. So don't hesitate to have a look. All right, so I'm in a test scene. I have a cube in it. And what I'm going to do is simply add a spring position component to it. So that gives me this nice inspector, UI toolkit powered, very efficient. And if I press play, you can see that the first thing is the target got auto set right and so now when i press bump i'm targeting that cube let's exit play mode and have a look at what this inspector does and before we move on everything i'm going to be mentioning today applies to all spring components not just the position spring uh, if you want to see the full list you can go and type in mm spring in your add component list and all that knowledge applies as well to a bloom intensity spring or a light color spring or a text mesh pro alpha spring all of them behave the same there will be small differences usually in the target for example here you can see that the spring position lets you specify a space world or local but everything else applies to all springs so that's all good so a spring component always starts with a target could be a light you want to control the intensity on. In this case, it's a transform. By default, if you leave that empty, well, your spring component is going to try to grab the component on itself, right? So that's why when I press play earlier, you could see that this was set to that transform. I can, of course, also drag any transform into that. And then for that spring position, I can specify the space I want to uh, move in, either local to my object or world. Then we have channel and time scale. So channel, if you're not familiar, there's another video explaining that you can use a MM channel or an int to decide how to communicate with that spring from the exterior. That can be through events, that can be through a feedback. If you're not using any of that and you just want that thing to move directly, you can ignore that. If you're interested in that, check out the documentation or the video on channels. And then the time scale mode, well, scaled or unscaled. If you use scaled and modify your time scale to reduce it to 0.5, well, that spring is going to move slower like that. If you increase your time scale, it's going to move faster. If you set it to unscaled, well, then any modification you make to the time scale is not going to impact that spring. That can be useful, for example, to have a spring move while the rest of your game is in pause. Then we have the spring settings. Next, we have the spring settings. So I'm going to start maybe pressing play and show you the difference. So right now I have my cube attached to my spring or rather its position is driven by spring values. And so when I press bump, it does this. When I press bump random, it does that. Um, let's try now to separate. Oh, no, before I do that, um, if I reduce the damping, you can see that 
for the same bump, I get a more loose spring if I reduce it more. And then if I change the frequency, I can do that even in real time. You can see that now my frequency is super high. Or I can also go the opposite and make it very loose like that. So now I have a very loose spring. Very good. I can also separate the axis. If I do that, then I have control over the damping and frequency of each and every component of my vector free. Right, so I can change the damping of just the X part. So I'm going to make this like that. So now I have a very, very strong X spring while the others uh, remain more loose. And what's also interesting to see here is you can see the inspector shows the value in real time of each of the spring, even with a nice moving bar out of that. Um, gives you very precise control over your springs. Another thing you can do in these settings is tweak your clamp settings. So I'm gonna maybe keep a very loose. How can I show that efficiently? Uh, I think I'm gonna do that. So. That's my move to random, yeah, move to random. All right, so now sorry for that, it's very much improvised. Okay, so what I've done here is I've changed my move to random, so we'll get back to that, but for the sake of the demo of that part, I need to move that part. Um, so move to random, I tweaked the min and max value. So now when I press the move to random button, you can see it picks a random position to go to, right? And I go from minus two on the x-axis to two. Okay, so what I can do now is I can decide to clamp the values. So I can say, well, I want the minimum value to always be zero. So when I move random, you can see that now I can never go past zero, zero being here, of course. And you can see that what happens is that if I try to go below zero, I just get clamped and it may not feel very natural. It depends really on what value you're moving. Uh, but for example, the intensity of a light can't be negative, right? So you can also click this clamp min bounce here. And so now every time it's going to try to reach zero it's also going to bounce on zero and that makes for much more natural behaviors see if i uncheck that and you can see that sometimes i'm just stuck on zero for a few frames can look weird um, and of course i can do that for the maximum as well moving on i have randomness whoops I'm going to start collapsing these. All right, randomness. So these let me define the random values that are going to be picked by the spring every time I call either move to random like this or bump random like this. So these are two methods that you can call when you're calling methods on your component you can either specify values and say i want to move to that particular value or you can say just randomize you know like go to any value within the parameters you've specified so for example move to random i have here um here i have my my, my test buttons so move to random uh, i can say between minus two and two on the x-axis and maybe minus five and five on the y-axis and so you can see that it's now picking values that are within these bounds. It's randomizing between this value and this value, gets a vector free, a new one, every time out of that and moves to that. And we have the same thing for bump random. So I can say I want to uh, bump, but only let's say on the Y axis. And I want that bump to be always 20. Well. That's what I would get if I were to say, well, sometimes you bump over force that is between minus 40 and 20. 
sometimes you can see I, I would go down more if I were to say minus 200. Most of the time I would, with something like that, I would get a value that is, well, negative. Um, and this is what I would get. And lastly, we have the test section. So this is of course useful when you're tweaking, your damping, your frequency, but it's also a good reflection of the methods that you can call on a spring component. So of course there's move to, and that one uh, takes that value by default. So uh, only for testing, right? It's uh, in in code you would you would say move to and pass it a vector free, uh, but here you can say well I want to see what happens when I move to zero zero two, well this happens, zero five two this happens, and so you can also call methods that will do the same thing but additively compared to the current value of the spring. So uh, let's say I move to zero one zero. That's this, but if I move to additive 010, I'm adding one on its y every time, and I have the same thing to subtract. And that can be useful, you know, for even simple movement of an object. Um, then I have moved to random. We've seen that previously, and that's going to use the randomness value we've defined here. And we have moved to instant. That's going to take, well, in the case of uh, code, you would pass that value, move to instant 010. But if you're testing, you can use this field. And this lets you instantly, without any spring, move to the value you specify. And then we have the bump section where you can bump. Uh, in this case, there's also a way to specify an amount. So you would say bump and a vector free in this case. But for the test, for the inspector, you can you can do that here and you can say, well, I want to bump by a lot on X, maybe like that, and uh, a lot on Y. And that will always do 500, 500. If instead you want randomness, you would use bump random. And there you go. If you also want to control your own randomness, well, then you can use the bump method and pass a randomized parameter that you generate on your own, of course. Um, lastly, we have some controls that are unrelated to move to or bump. You can stop, you can finish, restore initial value and reset initial value. So let's see what they do. For that, I'm going to need, I think, to uh, tweak these to get something a bit more permanent in terms of movement. All right, so I have my spring, it's oscillating and maybe i wanted to stop oscillating i just press stop and it stops wherever it is at the moment where i press stop i'm trying to get it when it's not exactly in the center but i'm unlucky or just bad at it maybe both are possible there i'd say i'll take that as a win and you can also press finish. So let's say I have this thing oscillating. If I press finish, it's going to get to its final point of rest. That's the same thing as waiting for this thing to stabilize, which of course can take a while depending on your settings. Assuming at some point you want to go back to where you were at the start, you can say restore initial values, and that's instantly going to move your value to where it was. And you can also say reset initial value. So a bit trickier and also requires a bit of luck. But let's say I'm moving like that. At some point, that wouldn't be the initial position. I'm going to press reset. OK, so I think I was around here. So now if I restore the initial value, you can see my initial value has changed. Um, that's useful for reasons, right? You're moving stuff around and you want to say, well, this is my new normal. This is my new initial value. When I call restore initial value, I want to go back there. That's when you call reset initial value. There are a few more methods, but these are the main ones you need to interact with. For more, check the class itself or check the documentation. Um, that's pretty much it for Spring Components. Now you know how to do a lot of stuff using feel. I hope you liked this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and bye.